नमस्कार एंड वेलकम टू टुडे सेशन ऑन ऑनलाइन जियो डेटा शेयरिंग एंड साइबर सिक्योरिटी माय नेम इज हरीश कर्नाटक आई एम ए कोर्स डायरेक्टर ऑफ दिस कोर्स एंड आल्सो साइंटिस्ट एस जी एंड हेड ऑफ डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ जियो वेब सर्विसेज आई टी एंड डिस्टेंस लर्निंग डिपार्टमेंट एट इंडियन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ रिमोट सेंसिंग इसरो देहरादून सो डियर फ्रेंड्स टूडे विल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट ए वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट topic that is on the geo data sharing so i think you may be aware of geo data but uh, for the participant those are not familiar with the uh, term geo data or a location information or location data so first i would like to discuss few important uh, uh, important definitions of geo data its characteristics and its application uses and i will also discuss about the very very important uh, areas that is called location based services where the geo data is being used in today's environment and we will see how in the public domain especially as a user uh, what are the important or critical cyber threats when you are accessing the location information or the map data or the satellite imagery from the different uh, online mapping services Uh, what are the possible security threats there so i'll be more focusing on the user perspective how this topic is relevant or important for you although i will try to discuss few important points with respect to the host of the data suppose you are hosting such data into your organization uh, two three slide i kept uh, for these users also uh, because in this course the large number of participants or audience are there and they are from the different backgrounds it heterogeneous background so i will try to uh, satisfy the need of all kind of users and i am very much aware that in this course the participant from the many uh, uh, organization like uh, crpf cisf and the capf uh, i can say and also from the government departments from it industry also i am seeing many users are participating but today's session will be generic in nature and we at indian institute of remote sensing iirs or isro dehradun uh, we are basically specialized center of creating hosting the geo data for the public access you may be knowing about the web portals like uh, isro bhuvan portals we have indian biosource information network biodiversity information system uh, many uh, such uh, information systems are hosted by isro like vedas is from space application centers and mosdeq is another data repository uh, what isro is sharing to the users so uh, today we'll be discussing little bit more about these data products this technology and the challenges uh, in this domain especially with respect to cyber security so dear friends uh, let us try to understand first the what is geo data so with the name geo and data these are the two uh, basically terminology uh, we use here it is basically known as a geographical data or sometimes we also call it the geospatial data uh, which refer to a data and information that has explicit or implicit association with the location related to the earth so when i say that if any data or information is related to a object in the earth surface and it is representing in the form of the coordinate in the form of the location information then it is called as geo data and geo data terms we also call it as geo spatial data sometime so here the geo spatial means the location specific information so we basically use this data uh, basically for uh, visual representation to depict a better understanding uh, of the uh, the impact of the human activities based on the specific geographical locations so when we use the geo data basically we try to understand uh, what things are changing in the geography uh, based on the climatic conditions based on the geographical location based on the weather conditions based on the other uh, all the things what we study here is very important uh, for Uh, any infrastructure development projects planning strategic applications disaster management location based services and so on so there are many many areas where the geo data is used uh, if you take the example of any citizen application or any planning applications so maps are 
a base data or base information what we required. If you are from the defense organizations, you know that you, you, you can understand in better way what is the importance of the maps. So whenever you are making a plan, so you required a good quality maps for your planning areas. So here today, advancement in the network or communication technologies like we have the 3G, 4G and now we are talking about the 5G network. So the sharing of the geospatial data is becoming very, very simple. And we have seen that these days a uh, lot of data from the many service providers like Google is sharing as a Google Maps and recently they also uh, launched the, uh, the Google Earth engine platform for the a different type of users like researchers and the, the technology users. And similarly from ISRO, we have the ISRO Bhuvan portals and you have many mapping applications installed into your mobile where you are basically sharing the location information uh, with these mapping applications. So today if you take the example of Google Maps, suppose you are using the Google Maps, uh, it's very useful and it's uh, basically making our life very easy. But uh, many times we are not aware what are the challenges with respect to cyber security when we are accessing this kind of location information for our day to day activity. In, in addition to that, when we are dealing with the geo data or geospatial data, there is a, a discipline emerging called a GIS or we call it a geographical information system. And this particular domain is getting very, very popular. These days, uh, we are seeing that many uh, top IT industries are basically establishing a GIS cell within their own company. And we have seen many organizations are looking for this geographical data, geospatial data for their planning for their business, uh, for identification of suitable sites for many things, including their business studies. So here, what does it mean? What is the GIS? It is basically, uh, basically in this domain, uh, it is integration of three technologies. Uh, one is, is called geography, second is called uh, information technology, third is a mathematics. So geography, information technology and mathematics, we combine this technology together. Sometimes we call a term called geomatics or geoinformatics. And when we use this particular domain or particular discipline to study it as a system, uh, then we are talking about the technology. When we say that it is a geographical information system, that time it is, we are talking about the technology. So in this domain, we also call it a geographical information science. So there we discuss about the concept and theory. And we, when we study this data or geographical data with respect to societal context, then it is called as a geographical information studies. So basically, it is an integration of three important technologies. One is called Global Navigation Satellite System, or we call it the GNSS. And uh, you may be knowing that it is an integration of a technology where we use the satellite based network basically to get the location information of any object in the Earth's surface. So some of the popular examples are GPS or Navic from uh, GPS is from USA and Navic is from ISRO. And then we have the GLONASS uh, and Galileo and we have the uh, Beidou from China. There are many such navigation systems are there, but currently uh, around five countries are having this expertise with them and this navigation service one we are getting this is basically we are getting from the a constellation of satellite which are orbiting above the earth's surface and these sur uh, satellites are capable to provide us the location information in the form of latitude longitude or altitude so when we have this coordinate with us then we can tell the precise location of your object when these coordinates are recorded, these the coordinates can be recorded for the static object or dynamic object. When I say the dynamic object, that means this object is moving in the surface, so we can track it. We can track the object. Uh, for this purpose, you must have seen the example of vehicle tracking system. We have seen the uh, the uh, sea uh, in the in, in the ocean the sea uh, tracking system. So we have the ambulance services. We have the many radio cab service. There are many such applications. But I uh, what I am going to discuss in coming slide. But what you have to understand here, this technology is known as a GNSS technology. Then we have the second technology called remote sensing technology. The remote sensing technology is basically a, again uh, it is a basically a sensor based observation of a earth surface. Uh, either this sensor can be installed or we can deploy it in the satellite or we can deploy it in the aerial or we can deploy it in the, these days in drones and UOBs also. So basically it is a from the remote places when we are getting the information about the object without uh, coming to the physical contact of the object then this technology called is a remote sensing. 
third is a geographical information system called GIS already I discussed about it it is basically a, a, a integrations of hardware softwares data analytics techniques data presentation techniques and so on uh, when we combine this IT or information technology together to handle the geographical data then it is called a geographical information system and when we combine these all three technologies together then it is known as a geospatial technology now come to the uh, the in general uh, why this technology is required and what exactly it is it is basically integration of three technologies what i just told you it's a computer science or uh, management information system geography uh, or cartography uh, and third is the application area so left side whatever i am showing you here you can see computer science and geography they are the core component or core technologies what we'll be using or core uh, discipline what we'll be using in gis but right side you can see here there are different applications like public administrations planning geological application mineral explorations forestry site selection marketing civil engineering criminal justice uh, surveying techniques so here the uh, what i have told here the criminal so crime gis another area which is getting these days very popular many police departments are using the crime gis for analyzing the crime condition in their areas and they can also identify the crime pockets their geographical locations in fact if they have the historical data if they have the some socioeconomic data they can also model the future places where there is a possibility of the crime so very very important domain uh, for the many many users many application thematic domain where this technology is used so what kind of data here uh, is available for the users one is data is is a footprint of a geographical object which are captured by the remote sensors and these uh, captures are available either as a vector format or the raster format when i say the vector is basically uh, in the form of the geometry it's like point line polygon we store the data like you can say the a footprint of a buildings are presented as a vector like a polygon similarly the building also can be represented as a point location similarly lines are basically used for the a continuous feature like a stream uh, 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 like a river stream or maybe road networks for this purpose we use the line geometry to represent the data when i talk about the raster data it is basically like a data stored in the pixels so pixels pixels are like taking the imageries so the way you are taking the photograph from your mobile the same way satellite can capture the imageries and these Im data in or informations are stored in the form of the pixel so this information when we are storing in the form of the pixel then it is called the raster data but when we are capturing the satellite imageries or we are storing the data in the raster or vector data we can store only the footprint or the shape of the and the geographical object but the characteristics are stored in the form of the tables or tabular data called the attribute so this way we basically store the data here so attributes are uh, collected uh, by using the ground survey or by integrating data from the uh, very uh, traditional way uh, from the uh, legacy data or from a management information system this data can be integrated here we use the concept layer i will not go in detail of this technology because the today's topic is something else so these are the only the introductory slide for your understanding how the data is being created how the data is being shared with the users so here there are many techniques are available here so we generate the footprint of this different geographical features and then we overlay these geographical features together and then represent in the form of the maps and these maps are serve to the users for various applications and we are already using it you may be not uh, knowing about the technology behind google maps but uh, ultimately you are the user of the google map and uh, you are basically using for many activity including your day-to-day uh, -day activity or in the offices also we have seen many government departments are using the google data sets so uh, what are the popular uh, geodata repositories who are the organization providing this data there are many some of the organizations are listed in this slide uh, one example is from the usgs earth explorer and then we have the sentinel open access hub nasa earth data search google maps bing map open street map isro bhuban uh, digital globe open data geo air based defense these are the different commercial organizations or sometimes the scientific organization they are creating a lot of geographical data uh, either through the satellite sensors aerial sensors or ground sensors or sensor networks and they are collecting this data creating this data and ultimately is being used by the uh, 
the user uh, segments and there are many many uh, applications like we are using this data for the on demand applications travel applications uh, weather applications we have seen navigation maps health and uh, fitness map we have the uh, there are many gaming apps and all where uh, the geographical data or location data is being used and in background these are the important organizations those are creating this data sharing this data with the users now there are many methods are evolved uh, by these organizations the one of the most popular method uh, of data access and dissemination is called uh, api based data access and sharing which is becoming very very popular and i will not go in detail or technical detail of the apis but the colleagues or friends those are coming from the it industry or the students basically those are uh, listening this session they may be interested on the concept how these application programming interface or apis are available for the geographical data or location data but here i would like to tell you if you search in the google or literatures you will be finding that there are many many open apis are available these days including uh, bing map Uh, the google maps isro bhuvan portals map my india open street map these all mapping agencies are giving their data as a api to the users but when you are getting access of this data there are many many security challenges what you have to take care in coming slide i am going to discuss about it but application programming interface is basically a connection between the computers or between the computer program it is a type of software interface offering services to other uh, piece of softwares and the document or standard that describe how to build or use such connections or interface is called api specifications so whatever organizations are basically publishing the mapping apis they also publish the document or the method stop accessing the api into your own program in general the apis are designed and developed for the developers software developers they use these apis in their own application but sometime if you are not aware when they are giving something to you what they are taking from you that is very very important because you know that in this today's world nothing is free so whenever they are giving to you some api access to you they must be collecting some information from your software as well so these are the general architectures how the apis are basically designed this is a client applications api request then we generate the server databases and api responses basically this is one of the method of secure data access when the organizations are publishing apis it is being considered as a, a secure data uh, sharing methods uh, but here you have to take care of uh, many uh, many important security considerations what i am going to discuss in later stages but you have to understand that this method is getting very very popular these days and it is nobody is going to give data access directly uh, by hitting to their uh, servers or by can making the server connection through the odbc jdbc and all but ultimately data is being shared as apis but apis are very very important and popular in the geospatial domain as well so there are many uh, i will not go in detail of this one now come to the important point in this domain is called tracking solutions so when this geographical data is available to you then the user perspective the important consideration is how this api will know the location information of the users when you are getting the google map into your uh, uh, your mobile or maybe in your software applications how the your location information is getting recorded by these mapping application these are the technologies one is called gps which is very popular these days and the gps uh, receivers are there into your mobile so when you are opening your location service or enabling the location service in your mobile then only the, the your coordinate will be recorded and will be shared with the api providers so when you are sharing the coordinate with the api providers or data providers that means your to your location is recorded here if your location or gps is off and you are not allowing the location information to any any third party service provider then they can also get access of your location through the wifi access point triangulations so we, when we have the wifi network within the organization because you know that the gps signals generally are not received inside the cemented roof when you are sitting inside the room so gps signal generally will not appear there but still when we are inside the building we may require sometime the location information of a, a person moving inside the building so in that case sometime we use the wifi access point triangulation concept 
then we have the cellular tower triangulations these days uh, you know that uh, in our country like india we have a excellent uh, network of the cellular towers and cellular towers are basically uh, having the static locations already uh, predefined location they are recording and they are having the uh, in their uh, databases but when you are connected to the cellular network towers so they also use the similar concept of triangulation what gps is using and then also they can get the uh, location your uh, location information but here uh, the accuracy will not be that much accurate uh, but in gps you will have the better accuracy but still uh, in the few uh, meters few hundred meters like 100, 200 to 300 meter accuracy still you can get through the cellular tower, tower triangulation there are concept of bluetooth beacons which are very popular these days especially for getting the location information inside the buildings so when you are inside a big buildings like in a in a five star hotel or you are in a some venue of some conferences that time if you have a big area so that time gps network generally will not work so generally what people use the concept of bluetooth beacons to get the information about the different uh, people different object uh, in the indoor location rfid or radio frequency based identifiers are also another way uh, people are using for getting the location of a object so now please make a note that uh, when i am when i am talking about the location information then uh, this information is come is coming from different sources so when we have this information with us or when we are sharing this information to the companies or service providers so when they have your location then they can provide you a location based services or we call it a lbs so location based services is a software service for mobile uh, device application that required knowledge about where the mobile device is geographically lo located so that means the location is basically of your device what you are carrying into your mobile in your pocket so when you have this location information with you so what you can do to this day you must have seen that uh, the the uh, radio cap providers like ola uber in the uh, metro cities so they are giving you the services based on your location so when you say you, no need to give you the your address no more nothing simply you look uh, switch on your location automatically they will get the location permission then they you will start getting the service and there are variety of services today available uh, when you are basically using your location data so uh, where we are using so there are many applications like navigations travel information including real time traffic notifications store and service locators fleet and mobile workflow workforce management trackings inventory monitoring uh, anti theft prevention fraud prevention using location based services to match the customers location uh, to a credit card trans transactions proximity based marketing roadside assistance social networking surveillance augmented reality and so on so you can see now you must have realized by this time this particular domain is part of our day to day activities we have seen that in the smart mobile phones when we are using any application for these services so location information is ultimately required by the service provider now when you are giving this information there is another area which is emerging called geofencing especially the people those are coming from defense background or strategic background they can understand this better way geofencing is a new concept which is emerging called is a is a fence it is a virtual perimeter uh, for the real world geographical areas the geofence could be dynamically generated or match a predefined set of boundaries the use of geofence is called geofencing and one example of uh, use of involve is a location aware device of the location based services uh, user entering or exiting a geofence so what you can do suppose you are using this concept of geofencing in this digital domain then you can track your user and in fact you can see uh, when the user was in, uh, was entering or had entered into this area of geofence and when the user gone out so geofencing is a very very important domain so please keep in mind there are many possibilities of uh, business here but at the same time there is a good possibility to track the different people in the geofence so these are the very very important areas especially uh, if you are uh, a person is carrying a mobile and you are uh, sharing some software with this mobile you can track the persons and in fact if in with respect to the uh, giving the services then automatically you can also enable the beep in the mobile itself when the person is crossing the geofence then you can tell please do not cross this area so here your limit is is over so that's why in the uh, in the ground 
uh, without geofencing you will not know, came to know about your boundaries especially uh, when you are deploying your people in the ground uh, especially the force people so if you create this geofence and your uh, team is carrying this mobile app with this uh, geofencing applications so the, you the, you can restrict their uh, uh, locality of like a patrolling and all and then this approach uh, may be very very useful for management of your ground staff but in the business side people are also using these geo funds for their business strategies and on so on but ultimately uh, there are uh, there are critical uh, the security issues uh, and the cyber security issues also when we are creating this kind of geo funds so what you have to consider here the important dimensions of the cyber security as we know that in during this course also we we are discussing about the network security cyber physical security all these point my colleague must have discuss about it but today uh, with this background of the geographical data geo data gis and the location based services uh, location data and then geo fencing concept now let us try to understand what are the challenges with respect to cyber security here so what i will be doing i will be talking about now data information security and application security these two important point uh, in the coming slide now what are the risk of using location based services you know that there are many advantages and we are very uh, frequently we are using this location based service in our day to day life so what are the risks here so in the recent past the application creators the mobile device developers and the mobile network operators have been accused of tracking devices and users without their consent so many time these days in the social media in the newspapers in many places you must have read about these things the the service providers the software providers solution providers they are getting the or they are tracking their users without the consent of the users many time users are so inno uh, innocent they are not aware basically what exactly these software providers are getting from them so location tracking data uh, in the wrong hand can lead to the situation where criminals thieves or st uh, like a, uh, your uh, stalkers uh, could use this information to assist with their crimes uh, you know that uh, many time we have seen that Uh, many people are sharing their location information in their social media platforms like uh, like a facebook like a instagram and all they are telling them uh, we, we are traveling to this place going there enjoying uh, uh, party here and so when you are giving this information so your location is already uh, is attached with this data so the the person who is basically tracking you will get the information about Uh, your location so please do not share any such uh, the family photographs or your own photographs your location with any any uh, social media application because you know that by default you may be not knowing that when you are posting anything in the social media uploading any content this data is going along with your location this is a very very critical thing so when you are sharing your location in fact if somebody is uh, tracking you the thieves are tracking you and they can get that uh, now you are outside uh, the home and you are enjoying your dinner in the uh, somewhere in the restaurant so now nobody will be there in your home this information uh, you have pass on without uh, without not knowing that actually this information you are sharing there on the lesser scale uh, you can say that the data can be used for unsolicited and unwanted targeted marketing and uh, advertisement and com and campaigns that may find uh, the overlay uh, intrusive so here what you can they can do if this information shared if they have created a geofence and suppose you take the example uh, your location information is shared right and uh, now suppose a company has created a geofence and that uh, their strategy is that if anybody is entering into the geofence start giving the Uh, the ads or the announcement or some popularization of a specific product which they are selling in this particular regions where their store is located so that that means you are trapped actually when you are monitors your location information share now they can do the business with you and they can basically start sending the message to you and they are in nearby your location something is visible and then automatically you will be attracted toward this and to reduce the security risk of using location based services it is advised to limit when applications are auth authorized to track users so what is important here when you are installing any applications so that time in generally uh, the the software or application is asking for many many uh, permissions so when you are giving this permissions what we say that 
the location permission is very very critical so when you are sharing or allowing any application to share your location be, be alert so you should know which application required really a location for you otherwise please remove this uh, uh, basically uh, right and then use this application what are the cyber threat already i discuss about it there are serious questions uh, about the how vendors go uh, who gather that data use and sell it most often without users knowing uh, that is already discussed here companies can obtain location data in various ways already i discuss about it so here uh, one is a crowd sourcing crowd sourcing is the concept what i discuss about the social media so where uh, your location is trapped without uh, switch on your uh gps or location information that also can be track already i inform you about it so uh what they can do they can cyber threats are like they can disclose uh your uh movement they can track your behavior very important so when you are uh, moving around the uh, your cities around your office and the location information many mobile apps are sharing and then they can also track your behaviors they can they can uh, use their identity they can theft it personal security and they can surveillance purpose they can use and uh, it's very very important so i always request uh, many times of the user of geospatial data location based services be careful on this another concept uh, what i would like to bring to your notice that it is called geo targeting so geo targeting is another a new concept in this uh, geo data sharing access and dissemination what is happening here the cyber attackers are using your location for geo targeting so geo targeting basically uh, the a particular malicious softwares or a virus or a attack or phishing attacks is designed for a targeted geographical or location specific users for example suppose i am targeting to attack the user of ncr region in the country and first i have to understand the behavior of the people in the ncr so what i can do i can design my attack the way it looks like a, a original attack so you will be seeing that you will generally see that okay it is looked like a genuine mail or uh, the softwares then you will click out i will show you the example for that so geo targeting is a location specific cyber attack which uh, is targeted to specific class of users and the cyber attacks methods are adopted based on local conditions and user behavior so before designing your geo targeted attacks so they will understand the location information or location specific requirement of a users there and these attacks are uh, more prone to uh, uh, success of the attackers basically if a generic attack is there many time you will came to know about the generic attack through the social media through newspaper through the some communication but geo targeted attacks are very very difficult to track because reason is it these attacks are targeted for a specific class of user by uh, reading their location by reading their local behavior and are very very prone to be successful another in this geo targeting the very very dangerous sometime but in many places it is very useful also but when i talking i am talking about the cyber security the concept of ip to location so is is a very very critical here and the attackers can get access of a location through ip addresses also so because i you may be knowing about the ip address i hope so so each mobile device computers or any electronic gadgets connected with the internet is having the ip address ip address is your identity your address in the network in a computer network it is your address so when i say your address and your device is having the location that i can tell in uh, what is your exact location in a in our surface suppose you are in dehradun where exactly you are if i am getting your ip address so the setting of your computers or mobiles such as language call and message details are sufficient know uh, about your behaviors so location information can get we can get from the gps wifi triangulations through the beacons from the rf id and so on but another threat is a ip address so ip to location is also very critical so that's why generally what we say people when you doesn't require the internet please switch off it 
please do not use because ultimately if your ip address is continuously connected it is more than sufficient to give your location here because i have seen that the ip addresses are also giving a good location at least up to the your organization level information can be shared with this uh, service provider please be careful while giving the permission to any software or application to access your system settings because ultimately the ip address is a part of your system so here you have to uh, be very careful so in geo targeting there are few examples what i have listed here like recently you must have heard about the attack in the india's uh, the uh, some of the uh, power infrastructure grid infrastructures uh, through the and uh, by by the cyber attackers like a red eco and shadow pad uh, these are the some attacks which are targeted in india similarly we have example of various banking trojans designed to pinpoint the brazil uh, didex is a uh, basically uh, e example for the uh, specific attack of us in germany similarly we have the uh, trusty jab is the most uh, prevalent in german speaking countries yobot is a popular in hong kong and japan uh, jbot is most wide uh, found in the uk us canada germany australia italy spain and japan you can see how these uh, attackers are designing their strategies they can target a specific country they can target a local users, specific regions, and uh, lang based on your language. In fact, sometimes you may get uh, some phishing attack in your regional language as well. And you will see that they, it, it looks like so so natural that uh, you will be surprised. And the geo malware example like ransomware is getting very popular these days. There are many attacks. In the recent past, it has uh, it is that seen most ransomware being distributed by attachment in the mails. So uh, during this course, our colleague must have discussed about it. The while opening the attachments, you have to be very, very careful. So I will just zoom this particular screenshot. You will see uh, what is happening here. You see this email. What is shown here? This is basically uh, mail is saying that it is a, from the Ministry of Home Affairs. And it is saying that uh, URI terror attack report. And you can see. Uh, it, this mail looks so natural and original like uh, from the NIC.in and Ministry of Home Affairs and says that here is a investigation report of URI terror attack. Please find attached here with the download the report. You know that this kind of attack was originated on the time when this incident happened in our country. So it was very local specific targeted to the Indian government users. You know that the mail was also looking very original. CC was marked to the uh, the original government accounts and simply the email signatures were also looking very original and innocently many government employees the officers they feel that this is a something important communication from our office very innocently they open this report and their computer was trapped and immediately uh, it was locked and the ransomware attack was there and this was a very tough or difficult situation for these users so you have to be very careful and uh, because we have seen that uh, the geolocation or because yeah, this will, mail will not come to everyone this mail will come based on your location where you are located suppose your location is trapped either you are inside the government office and they know that you are the users sitting or accessing your email inside a government department and they can target you based on that and such email communication can be sent here so be careful on that uh, the objective of this today's session is how much this location information or geographical data is becoming important and when it is important what are the threats what are the challenges here that's why we are discussing these things here now what are the advice uh, how to avoid this geo targeted attacks uh, one is please install anti malware and uh, and web protection of soft solutions into your device regular backup of your important files keep at least one recent backup offline mode no need to keep everything online so please make a practice that what if you have something very important in the office very important in your personal life so please maintain a clean backup of your data is it required be very careful about the opening email attachments always keep your computers device and application up to date with the latest security updates this is very very important generally we are avoiding and these alerts are coming to our computers into our mobiles please update your uh, operating system new patches are there 
we are ignoring it please do not do it whenever you are getting the latest patch because ultimately the the software providers like operating system providers your solution provider they are giving they are their team is keeping very close watch on these alerts and these uh, threats they are keep on updating their patches so please do this practice use strong unique password for all your account this is of course very very important uh, my colleague must have discussed about the password management during this their sessions uh, this is a important things in the official use when you are inside your office update the latest software patches the same thing do not use login with administrator right please use login credential with minimum rights so generally what we have seen in many uh, offices people are using or their admin uh, username password administrator username password for their day to day working so please do not do it whenever you are doing regular office work please use the username and password which have the minimum rights it is not required for your day to day activities please do it uh, don't enable macros macros are also very uh, sensitive because uh, we have very closely seen that when we are enabling the macro in our softwares like ms word uh, powerpoint excel uh, especially in the ms excel the macros are required for many activities but if you are connected with the internet and if any macro is capturing your ip address during the process and through this ip address your location can be captured and you can be a geo targeted cyber attacker user so a victim can be you can be a victim is a geo targeted victim of a cyber attack that you have to be careful on that training is very important train and retain the employee in your business your users can be your weakest point link sometimes it happens because if your users are not well trained they are not aware of the cyber attacks and they are continuously connected to the internet doing lot of internet surfing uh, social media access sharing their location sharing lot of data so they can be weakest point in your organization so that you have to take care so treat security as a system every extra layer of protections whether encryption or uh, synchronized endpoints to network solution will help protect against the uh, increasingly sophisticated threats uh, specifically for the location data information so for the developer also i kept two three slide but uh, i think it will be little bit more so quickly i will tell you if you are a you are from a organization uh, which is responsible for sharing the geo data with your users uh, especially the if you are a host institutions of the geo data so what you have to do some few important uh, considerations i have listed here there are some security feature in web framework which are applicable for the geo data sharing and dissemination especially for the host organization we are very strongly recommending these days the authentication system like json uh, web token or jwt based authentication you should use reduce the vulnerabilities from the csrf that is the cross site request forgery protection against the cross site scripting prevent the sql injection and click jacking protections this is a one very very critical things what we have observed especially for the mapping applications many time because we are using the third party apis uh, in our online mapping platforms so click jacking uh, click jacking is a very very critical threat in our web applications many time uh, the attackers use our website or mapping application as a platform to uh, the to damage the other users Uh, this is a very important what you should take care of it host header validations referred policies cross origin uh, opener policy and most importantly you have to host your application in the by implementing the ssl latest version certificate as https is very important so this is slide i will skip because i feel that this particular session was not designed for the developer but one or two slide i just kept because i have uh, seen that uh, the distribution of the participants they are coming from different organizations uh, especially for geo data hosting and uh, sharing uh, few points are very important i'll be uploading this slide into the study material you can download and you can refer for your future studies in conclusion what i can say uh, geo data and its applications are becoming integral part of our daily life and location based services are very popular for many citizen services but cyber attack security threats are very critical in sharing of location information that you have to take care and installation and utilization of location aware software application need to be carefully studied by the users whenever you are installing this applications please keep on reviewing the permission granted to the software especially when your location should be shared or not shared 
many time i have seen the users are not aware either the location services are enabled or disabled so this is a very important point and the host organizations also need to evaluate their uh, solutions and services with respect to cyber security before making it open for public access in fact in the scientific organizations and and the organization those are interested to share the maps or services to their users they are some time we have seen that they are avoiding the cyber security uh, before making their mapping services live to the users please be careful please audit your mapping application before making it public because the map services satellite imagery data hosting of such kind of data uh, is very very prone to uh, cyber attacks so here uh, be careful because especially when you are using the third party apis or mapping apis into your own mapping application with this thank you very much uh, for your kind attention if you have any questions please post into the e class portals i will try to take uh, a few important questions for discussion thank you very much